Hi guys, it's Blackie for Shaman's Forge Woodscraft. Okay, today we're going to make a little tomahawk improvement. Now I recently got this rucksack from uh, Jason Hunt in Camp Craft Outdoors. And so, I'm going to be using this this season. I'm about to be going, as I mentioned before, to the Duggar Mountain Southeast Bushcraft Base Camp Camp Out on Duggar Mountain the first weekend of October, I believe it's 4th, 5th, 6th, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I will be there on Friday, okay? There's going to be a lot of people there, and it, we're going to have a great time. So this is about to start my season of camping. It's cooled off enough now that I can actually get out there and do a little bit. Usually I would start my camping back in September. Yes, you can camp earlier in the year, but trust me, you're going to pay for it. The sweat is going to make it where you just don't want to do it. So, it's starting to get cool enough now that you can enjoy it. Only when the sun's straight up is it miserable. When it's below that way or below that way, it's halfway livable. And at night, you can enjoy the fire. So, getting I will there. be getting up there and spending the weekend. I'm going to be teaching a class at it. And so, since I have now become a, an ambassador, fancy word, from, uh, which I call it a field tester, but an ambassador for... Camp craft, this is going to be the ruck I'm going to take. Now, I've been using that German Alpine bag 10 years. So, I'm putting a lot of faith in this bag to use it and leave my beloved bag at home. So, it's probably going to take a little bit of adjustment. And so, today we're going to talk about my first tomahawk improvement to this. All right, looking at the back, I'll back shoot, looking at the rucksack, excuse me. I like the way it's built. I like its size. I like its depth. And it does fit fairly well. And I've carried it around a little bit now, just, you know, testing it out a little bit. I haven't camped with it yet. But the one thing that I know of all these type of bag packs is what is in the back is going against my back. And there is no frame in this. And there isn't any frame in a lot of these other bags. So I want some sort of pad between me and the back. And, like in my... Alpine pack, I have a pad that I can pull out for a quick sit when everything's wet. So, we're going to do that. I'm going to take an old U.S. Army sleep pad. And this one has been used several times for such projects. But what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut a strip just big enough to slide down in there. Alright, and what I'm going to do is get it up here and look at the actual side. There's two seams running on either side, and I want to run from seam to seam. Just like that. So, getting that up there. In fact, I'm going to go this way because I'm right-handed. I'm going to get it up there, and I'm going to make sure that edge is straight. Come across, and I'm going to roughly mark it with my thumb. Now I'm going to take and put a starter cut right there. Now I'm going to lay it down on the edge of a straight edge and relatively cut straight. This is not rocket science. I just need two of these pads cut. So okay, stay with me. Using my WCNK, because that kukri hook right there is perfect for this, I hook and just simply drew a straight line across on the edge and I produced two of these. Now, I want the right height. And height is going to be right about there. Now I'm wanting it to be a little short, like a half inch. Not two inches too long and not three inches too short. So about a half inch. And I want both of them cut to roughly the same size. So I measure right there. Now I cut this. And lining up so all my edges are correct. Like that, right about here. Cut across using that kukri edge for a cutter. Just like that. Get that out of the side. Now, this second one, I am not going to cut fully. I'm going to score it. So I've got the full length one pad, and I've got this piece. So I'm just going to take the tip 
and score it all the way across. Say that depth about halfway. Just like that. Now it will fold along that edge. Just like that. And become the piece that okay, sits now, on the bottom. I'm going to take the gear I've already got in here, which is my haversack and a few little pieces for a gear load. Okay, everything out. Now, I'm going to take that piece that's got the bottom to it. I'm going to fold it, and it's going to the bottom. Just like that. Now push it down in the corners, and it will kind of stand up. Now you notice this pocket back here? I want that pocket to lock this in place. I'm going to stand it up now. So this is in place. Everything pushed down to proper position. And I see I need to cut off about three inches. So now I'm going to make it three inches shorter. Hang on. Now using the one I just cut as the template, I'll cut the other one short. Just like that. Now, the one with the foot to it is going to go in first. Like that. And that will stand it up almost like a frame in there and put padding against my back. Now, behind it, between that and the back wall, I put this one. Just like that. Now this flap right here, that drops down over it, and that's going to lock it in place, see? Now I've got something I can put my gear into, and I have padding against my back right there. So that cook pot or whatever is not going to dig into me. Also, by doing it this way, now when I put my load in, like this, just like that, and all my other fun stuff, just like this. Now when I go to open the bag up, and I loosen it up right here, and it's wet, I want to pull everything out. I don't want to have to wrestle. All I got to do is reach in here and lift up on that pouch, reach and grab the back one, and slide it out. Now I've got a sitting pad, something I can sit on and keep my butt up off the wet ground, and my frame is still there. Now to put it back, all I gotta do is open it up like that, lean the inner one in, put that between the side, and push it back down in. And it will go back in without any trouble. The double layer. I also now have two pads I can pull out and put side by side to put my legs on one, my butt on the other, or something as a work area. See? Let me get you a little closer and take a look at that. Okay. Now, now when I open the bag up, I throw the flap out of the way. This zippered pouch right here, which is going to keep all my little things organized, compasses or whatever, I can grab it and lift it up out of the way. And here are my two pads. I grab the back pad, slide out. Now I've got a sitting pad ready to go. To put it back, all I have to do is pick up shove straight back. This, the front one will act as a guide, and it's trapped by the weight in the bottom, so it's not going to come out too. At the same time, that will lock that in place, so now I have a pack with a pad in it, i.e. it acts like a light frame and holds it up. So now when I cinch her up good and tight, so it's not going to go anywhere, like that, and put the flap down, even when I sit down there's not hardly anything in it, it'll hold its shape. Now, when I put it on, center it up, now the pad is against my back. I got these wired up for another reason right now. But now whenever I'm carrying like a cook pot or whatever, it's not going to dig into my back because I got that padding in there. It's not a lot of weight. It weighs nothing. 
but I've added so much versatility to my pack now. Now I've got a sitting pad I pull straight out. In a bad situation, I can pull the two of them out, put one under my hips, one under my shoulder, and it's a sleeping pad if I've got to sleep on the ground because I got caught out here. Either way, I've improved it. What they used to call many years ago tomahawk improvements. It meant you went into a piece of land that was wild and you made little improvements to make it better for you. Let's talk about straps for a minute. Now on this rucksack, from Camp Craft, it has twin um, D-rings that bind the straps. Now, I've been using this, and so far I have not needed any additional padding, and I'm toting about 15 pounds in the bag at this time, but I'm used to a pack. You may want some, and Jason says he can probably come up with some sort of extra padding if necessary, but let me show you how these straps should work, okay? My little two cents worth. There's always more than one way to do something, and this is the way that I work these type of straps because back in my days when I did rendezvousing, I had these type of straps on several of my haversacks. And here's how I would set it up to carry a load. So let me show you. Okay. The strap is attached to the top and then it comes down here to this buckle assembly. Now let me show you this buckle assembly. What it is is simply a strap that has been sewed with two D-rings in it. Just like that, okay? Those are loose together so they can swivel around and lock. Okay. That's the idea. Right here is a loop with two D-rings, okay? They're able to free float around. Then the strap comes down and it's got a sewed keeper on it to keep it from flopping out easily. And what most people are gonna do is this. You go through both of them, then you pull it to the distance you want, spread them apart and come through the one closest, like that. Now those two rings lock over each other, like that, and the tension binds it and causes it to bite. Now you can do that. However, I found on a pack, there's a little bit better way to do it. And Jason has left enough slack just for that. What you do is you go through both like we talked about, but now you double the strap in half, you spread and you put the doubled strap through that one and pull it to where it is. Now notice I can take up the slack right there. Now the strap is coming out, going between, and then going back in. Now the advantage to this is this. When I'm wearing this pack, let me adjust it and I'll show okay, you that. Now you can see where I've got that loop. Now to pull it tight, all I have to do is just grab the inner side of the loop, the side of the loop that's closest to the strap, and pull. And that tightens it up. I can also pull the long strap to take up any extra slack. So as I pull that good and tight like that, it's cinching that up. You see that top piece is a little loose and that's important because now if I want to tighten it up, I just grab and give a tug. If I need to loosen it, I can take my thumbnail and hook it and wiggle it back. But what happens when I'm cinched in like this on both sides and it's nice and snug and everything and it's riding good, what if I get in a bind and I can't pull the strap off my shoulders? What you do is you grab that loose tab back there and jerk and the strap comes completely loose. So it's a quick disconnect for the strap. What normally happens is these straps kind of take a memory after a while. Now they're not digging into me at all, but I can put it on loose and then I can stick my thumb in that loop and just pull and I cinch it up. If I get to the end of it, I can grab that top strap and just kind of pull it back a little bit and then grab that bottom and pull it tight again. Well, now I'm snug. Everything's riding good, everything's centered up. It's not digging into my shoulders. I can adjust each one independently. But should I fall or whatever, and I can't do this, all I have to do is grab that strap and the strap's free. So it's a quick disconnect, a quick down and dirty disconnect. Hope this gives you an idea, guys. Please leave any questions or comments below. And until next time, I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge, wishing you safe journeys have a great day, guys.